A long while ago, I bought myself a VW van and traveled across America. I made it all the way to Florida and back, and it was an incredible adventure. Before I left, I sold my gaming PC and bought a laptop so that I could have a mobile computer while I was on the road. Now that I'm back, it's time to build myself a new computer. Should be easy, right? There are no graphics cards. After doing tons of research, it turns out that certain components are impossible to find. RAM and graphics cards especially, with scalpers basically running the markets and God knows I'm not spending $2,000 on a 30 series graphics card. This is my new journey. Let's see if I can find the parts to build a new PC. Starting with the GPU. I decided to scour the internet. I figured it would be a bust, but I had to know what I was looking at here. I saw graphics cards going for more than double the retail price. Luckily, I'd worked at Best Buy before I left on the road trip, so I stopped in to see if maybe my buddies in there could score me a card. Mission failed. Everyone that I'd worked with quit and they had no stock. A few days later, a friend of mine told me about the Best Buy Total Tech Support program, which instantly made my nose shoot up in the air. I had to try to sell that scam to every customer I saw when I was working at Best Buy. It's honestly not worth it unless you're buying from them all the time. Apparently, if you subscribe to the Total Tech Support, which is a $200 investment, you now have a chance to get a graphics card, not a guarantee. Without Total Tech Support, you're not able to get alerts for when GPUs are in stock, and even if you're lucky enough to get there while the cards are in stock, they're being held for people who bought into the pay-to-win scheme. I was doing some research and there were a lot of scalpers who said this Total Tech Support thing from Best Buy had made it a lot easier for them to snatch up cards. All they had to do was wait for the alert on their phone, and they could buy them all up before anyone else gets to see them. Nice job, Best Buy. Luckily for me, I had an in with a different company, Falcon Northwest. I was hoping that I could go into Falcon and get them to sell me a card. I'm looking for a 3080, so we'll see what happens. Success! Now, I didn't get my 3080, they were out of stock, but I did get a low hash rate 3070 Ti for $675. Online, these things were going for $1400. Now, I definitely cheated. Not everyone has an in with a computer store, and I kind of feel bad, but as far as I've seen recently, prices have been going down, looking kind of like MSRP again. And I'm hoping all those scalpers out there who bought up all these cards are now losing money due to this. Screw you guys. Now, while I was in Falcon, I also bought some Kingston DDR4 Renegade RAM clocked at 2400 MHz. And before I began picking up my other parts, I knew I had some brainstorming to do. You see, I'm a traveler. When I went to Vietnam, I took my PlayStation 5 with me, and no, I'm not talking about the console. Kind of annoying that Sony stole my computer's name, but either way. If you don't know, I built a mini console killer a few years ago when the PlayStation 4 was out, and I named it the PS5. A dumb little joke. Either way, I took this thing to Vietnam, and when I went on the road trip, I sold my big beastly desktop and replaced it with a laptop. Now that I'm in the market for a new desktop, I want to do something similar to the PS5. I want to make something compact and easy to travel around with. I spent about a week looking at different compact cases, and there were quite a few that I liked. Eventually, I decided to go for the Fractal Design Node 202. I love the fact that all the components sit in a middle compartment, and then you can still remove the side panels. It was always a pain getting into the Silverstone Milo 8 that my PS5 is housed in, and this case looked easy to work in and customizable. Once I knew what case I was going to get, I now needed to pick up some components. So here's my part list. All right, so all of my parts are in, and I wanted to kind of go through what I got so that we know what's going into this system here. So I guess the case will be the first thing. This is the Fractal Design Node 202. Um, it kind of looks like a DVR right now, and we're gonna fix that. As for the power supply, this is a Dagger 600 watt that I actually got from my buddy Trevin. I was asking him about it. I was like, I've never heard of Dagger before. And it turns out it's a really, really nice brand. Next to that, we've got the ROG Strix B550i Gaming. That is going to be the Micro ATX, no, Micro ITX motherboard. Behind that, we've got the 3070 Ti, the EVGA Ultra. Then we've got 32 gigabytes of Renegade DDR4 RAM and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Now, I also have another M2 in my laptop. It's a two terabyte, and I'm gonna switch it over from my laptop over to this. Under that, we have the Ryzen 5600X. I was trying to decide between the 5800 and the 5600, and there's like a 2% difference for $200. So I was like, no, I'm just gonna keep that. Then we have our low profile CPU fan. 
and of course some screwdrivers. Now I want to do some tests with the airflow just as it is. But I 3D printed some parts here that is going to help with the airflow later. So we're going to do some tests without those first and then with them. And then we're going to do something magical with this case. That's a surprise. So let's get into the build. Now this was the second smallest computer I'd ever built. I used to build tiki's and frag boxes back at Falcon Northwest, so I figured this wouldn't be too difficult, but I can tell you right now, this was one of the most challenging builds I've ever done. First things first, we had to open the case and take a look inside. The only cables you get inside the case are your USB 3.0, your HD audio, a power supply cable, and your front panel headers. I didn't like that the power supply cable ran across where the graphics card goes. I had some fans that I was going to be throwing in there to help push air away from the GPU, so I rerouted this power cable before I began. I also knew that since I wasn't going to be using any 2.5 inch SSDs, I could remove this tray here for a little extra room. I then removed the housing for the power supply, and I'll show you how that thing works soon. Now, I didn't realize this, but I'd put the shroud on upside down. The elongated bill needs to be on the top of the power supply, and the PSU fan needs to face the bottom of the case where the vents are. This took me much longer than I'm comfortable admitting to figure out, but it wasn't too long before I did figure it out, and I had it in place. It was at this point that I started installing the fans for the GPU. I had these 120mm Corsair fans laying around from a previous build, but after hearing how loud they were, I decided to buy some Noctua Silence and replace them. After that, it was time to prep the motherboard. Before I got the case, I had to put the components together to make sure everything was working properly, which is why the Ryzen chip is already seated. Once the motherboard was in place, I tightened it down with some screws. Now, I told you that this build was kind of a pain. See, I'd forgotten that I still had a 2TB M.2 SSD in my laptop. So I ran upstairs, disassembled the laptop, pulled out the M2, unscrewed the motherboard from the Node 202, and popped the SSD in. After that, I grabbed my 1TB M2 and popped it in place on the front of the motherboard. While I had the motherboard out, I snaked some thermal paste onto the CPU and screwed down the cooler. This is the ID Cooling IS40X, which I've heard is a silent low profile cooler. I like the price, but if I could go back in time, I'd buy the Noctua, and I'll explain why a little bit later. Once the cooler was screwed in, the motherboard was now complete, and we could move on to the next bit of the build, the graphics card. Now this part isn't hard, but I did make it difficult on myself. This case comes with a riser card for the GPU. You want to install that first. I started with the graphics card, and when it came time to install the riser, I had to fiddle around for a while to actually get it in place. It really wasn't too hard, but it's good to know for anyone who plans on building in this thing. Now that the graphics card was installed, the build was almost done. All I had to do now was manage my cables. I used the VGA cables that came with the power supply, and they looked good like this, but they stopped me from closing the case. So I ran upstairs and got some longer 6 to 8 pin cables and tied them down. Now that the build was cable managed, I started her up to see if she still worked. After that, I popped the side panels back on and prepared for the next project. Now, I was having some issues with this PC for the first couple days. I kept getting GPU beep errors and randomly the computer would shut down and enter a boot loop. 
After reaching out to Reddit, it turned out the riser card for the GPU is a 3.0, and the motherboard has a setting to auto-recognize this. The only issue is it can recognize it as a 4.0 riser card instead, which caused issues. So I went to the BIOS and manually set the riser to a 3.0, and I no longer ran into any problems. I've even installed Windows 11 on this thing and she's running perfectly. On my 2070 Super laptop, I could render a 10 minute 4K video in about an hour and 30 minutes. This computer renders it in 8, which has vastly improved my workflow. Now, I mentioned another project, and I want to share it with you, but that deserves to be its own video. In all, I love this case. It's compact, it's easy to move around, and I'm glad that I got the case I did. I was thinking for a little bit about making my PC out of Legos, but in the end, I decided against it. I worried that it might brick my system. Bye guys.